Welcome to this series on how to use math in construction. In this lesson we'll be looking at stairs. Now, this is not a complete lesson on how to build stairs. Stairs can be quite complex. There are a wide variety of materials we can use. There's a lot that goes into that. But this is just going to be an introduction on the math that goes in and how to calculate stairs, how to lay them out when we're designing them, and um, just some basic information about them, but we're going to be focusing on the math part of it. So let's imagine that we need to make a set of stairs that raises us up 110 inches from one floor to another floor. Standard stairs have a 7 inch rise and a 10 inch run. This is a pretty standard across commercial buildings and all that, so we want to keep fairly close to that. It's just a comfortable size that is good for the average person. So we're going to try to stay close to that. So if we take 110 inches and we divide it into 7 inch increments, it comes to 15.7, which of course doesn't quite work. We have to have an even number of steps. So let's round that to 16 and imagine this is divided into 16 equal increments. 110 divided by 16 brings us to 6.875 inches. And of course our tape measures don't have that on them. So let's convert that to 16 of an inch which is quite easy. 16 times 0.875 gives us 14. That means it is 14 sixteenths of an inch, which simplifies to 7 eighths. We can double check ourselves. 7 divided by 8 is 0.875. So this means that our rise is actually going to be 6 and 7 eighths of an inch. That will give us an even amount of steps so it comes out right at the top. We can eliminate the top and bottom steps because the bottom step is on the floor, the top step is going to be onto the next floor, which leaves us with 14 treads. We can add our risers. 14 treads, each one at 10 inches long, means we're going to need a distance of 140 inches on the floor in order to be able to get our rise of 110 inches to our next floor. So let's imagine we're going to get ready to lay this out on a stringer and cut a stringer to make our stairs. We know that our rise in this case is 6 and 7 eighths of an inch. Our run is 10 inches. So we're going to take a carpenter's square. These are very standard. And we are going to mark 6 and 7 eighths on one side of the square and 10 on the other side. There's sometimes there's little gadgets you can use um, that attach there or you could just make a little mark on it. However you want to do it so that you know um, where you're at. And when we rotate this it will give us the correct angle if we put 10 on the one side, the 6 and 7 eighths on the other side, and now we can mark what's going to be our top tread. Slide the square up, and we can mark down what's going to be our first riser. We can slide the square forward and repeat the process for our next tread. Slide it back for our next riser, our next tread, and so on. Now in this case we're not going to keep going um, all the way down that whole uh, stairs because I want to just keep it simple but this would be um, how we would lay it out. Now I want to do where it meets the floor. I'm going to keep the same angle but this time I'm going to cut back underneath that will give it a good solid surface to sit on the floor. Then I'm going to slide it up to the top measure back my 10 inches for the top tread. I'll cut another 90 degree cut. Now this will sit up against the top floor now I can cut out my stringer and I have a shape like this. When I rotate that up against the floor and the wall, I have a nice set of stairs. And if I measure them, they will each be 6 and 7 eighths of a rise and a 10 inch run all the way up to the top, including the last step up onto the top floor. So this is the basics of how to lay out stairs. Uh, this applies pretty much across the board. Um, to how they're, they're made. Some variations of course um, depending on the application or the materials we're using but this is the basic layout. If we get more complex such as a case like this where we don't have the necessary straight run or we don't want it for architectural reasons in this case we have two landings three sets of stairs and you can use the same methods just break it down into th literally three sets of stairs calculate each one and design it separately so they match up with your landings and you can design as complex of stairs as you want. Just keep 
adding on like that, design each section separately and so that they all match together.